ਬਿਓਨ ਲਾ ਸੀਐਲਸੀ ਐਂਡ ਯੂਐਲਐਸ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਚੰਡੀਗੜ੍ਹ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਯੂ ਆਲ ਟੂ ਅਨਦਰ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਚ ਵਿਲ ਗਿਵ ਅਸ ਦੀ ਇਨਸਾਈਟਸ ਟੂ ਵੇਰੀਅਸ ਐਸਪੈਕਟਸ ਸਿੰਸ ਦੀ ਸਕਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਹੈਜ਼ ਇਟਸ ਓਨ ਚੈਲੰਜਸ ਐਂਡ ਇਫ ਟੂ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਲਾਇਰ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਆਫ ਲਾ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ or for that matter anyone if the concept of how the succession devolves within the hindus is a concept which ordinarily one wants to know and especially in the wake of the amendment made in 2005 and what is the effect of the latest judgment whether it will apply retrospectively whether it will by apply prospectively what is copasnary what is a personal share all these issues if one gets the insight in a seamless manner one always gets enlightened in the right perspective and the confidence not of the student the student of law that is the lawyer or the judge for all that matter is much better because it's large scope the act is quite large primarily as we have just just discussed with justice n manokaran uh, mr n manokaran the advocate to give the insights and if time permits we can go beyond section 6 as the time would be we will also will have some q and a session as in the normal routine we have but again the top the questions would be in and around section 6 of the hindu succession act and not any other topic or non any other thing <clears throat> mr man and marukaran does not need any introduction as such he has been practicing since 1995 and since he has been taking issues which are of relevance it speaks from the volume that around 1700 judgments are reported and it shows that ordinarily uh, those who have been practicing and even on the student one examines that the judgments which are reported are invariably where the legal aspects are to be touched i'm just reading the messages as to some people it's not audible could you just put post it on the chat box as to whether it's audible or not then the necessary steps can be taken and he has also been a regular resource person in a tamil nadu judicial academy since the year 2012 and teaching in the judicial academy itself gives the insights that the speaker is well taken for the purposes of making it understandable not only to the lawyers but also the academy which is considered to be the nursery where the judicial officers are also given insights by the experts without taking much time i will call upon mr n manokaran to give the insights of section 6 primarily of the hindu succession act it's more like a primer so over to you mr n manokaran we are deeply obliged on behalf of beyond law clc and ulc that you have given the insights right sir very good morning to one and all uh, it is a great pleasure and indeed i am happy to be present before you through this webinar i thank uh, mr vigas and his group for uh, giving this uh, opportunity to share my views and thoughts in the uh, hindu success act uh, which is always uh, troubling us in the civil court practice further i am one of the disciples of honorable justice s nagamuthu i am here before you only because of him therefore i thank him all heartedly for giving me this opportunity to share my views hindu success and act 1956 it is one of the important act which came into uh, force on chosen in 1950 a few important enactments uh, uh, came like hindu marriage act hindu adoption maintenance act then this hindu succession act uh, guardianship and what's up all these acts have come after uh, the constitution before that uh, we, we did not have any codified law in so far as uh, uh, succession laws are concerned so 
uh, earlier uh, this uh, hindu uh, hindus were governed by only sastric and customary laws we didn't have any codified laws even though this law is an age old uh, but still it is ageless and uh, uh, even after the codified act came into force in 1956 still uh, we have been uh, uh, retaining the concept of coparsonary which has been in force for uh, uh, decades together uh, after before this act 1956 uh, came into force uh, there were a few enactments uh, uh, to my knowledge the hindu law of inheritance 1929 Uh, came into force which uh, gave them uh, right only to the uh, few uh, categories of peoples namely sisters daughter uh, sons daughter daughters daughter and sister then thereafter another legislation that is uh, hindu women's right to property act 1937 uh, which is the basis for the subsequent 1956 enactment because uh, only under this 1937 act uh right was given to the widows uh to um, have, to have a right to property limited right to property and uh, she is entitled to get right as equal to that of her son in the property of her husband but that right is only limited right uh, thereafter only the hindu succession in 1956 uh, came into force in fact uh, there was uh, one uh, view was taken that uh, this uh, hindu women's right to property act uh, has no application to the agricultural lands and uh, th- this view was uh, put under challenge before the federal court uh, in uh, 1941 uh, federal court page number 72 uh, the legislative competence of the act was uh, put under challenge and the federal court has taken the view in 1941 federal court page number 72 that it is only applicable uh, it is not applicable to the agricultural lands uh, uh, then uh, after a few years uh, this 1956 uh, act came into force before going to the act uh, uh, because there are a lot of younger members uh, who are listening this uh, uh, discussion and my aim is also only to target them because uh, there are few fundamentals we should know before understanding the entire concept of this hindu success act um, uh, the fundamentals are one joint family hindu joint family what is hindu joint family and and joint and undivided a joint and undivided hindu family is called uh, joint hindu family uh, in a joint it is a larger body the coparsonary is a smaller body within the uh, uh, hindu joint family so uh, hindu joint family is a larger body which consists of male and female members a, a common ancestor his sons and common ancestors wife mother and uh, sons wife and uh, uh, wives and uh, daughters all constitute a hindu joint family even a single male member with his uh, wife daughter and mother unmarried daughter mother and uh, wife can constitute a hindu joint family uh, uh, the hindu joint family female members also can be there but not in coparsonary coparsonary is concerned only male members uh, would be there in coparsonary but as far as uh, hindu joint family is concerned even even a, a single male member constitute a, a joint family along with his wife uh, unmarried daughter and mother it is permissible in law hindu joint family uh, is not only for property whether hindu joint family has property or uh, uh, no property it makes no difference but hindu joint family is not only for property and also for food and worship so the family is for all, uh, different purposes for enjoyment of property for worship and food everything all are living under one roof so hindu joint family is a, a larger body uh, and uh, the whether property is there for joint family or not it makes no difference they can constitute a joint family so uh, uh, then we'll go to coparsonary what is coparsonary coparsonary uh, means uh, only a male members 
in the family can constitute a coparsonary coparsoners uh, coparson is a smaller body is uh, otherwise i can call it as an inner cabinet of the joint family so joint family is a larger body in which a coparson is a smaller body in, in, in the coparson only male members uh, will be there female members till 2005 prior to that there were state enactments so before the the daughters were in, uh, inducted as coparsoners only male members uh, constituted a coparsonary in a coparsonary uh, it, it, it is not it is neither a creation of statute, statute nor created by any parties it is an institution by itself uh, coparsonary is an institution by itself the supreme court in 19 ar 1976 supreme court 109 in ar 1976 supreme court 109 has elaborately dealt with and held that coparsonary is an institution it is not a creature of statute and uh, coparsonary uh, in, in the coparsonary a coparsoner gets right by birth this is birth uh, is birth by by birth you will get right in the coparsonary and uh, coparsonary uh, consisting of of four degrees namely a common ancestor and uh, his um, uh, son grandson and great grandson so all these four constitute a coparsonary suppose it will not go beyond this four degree take an example a great grandfather b grandfather c son d grandson suppose if d gets a son by uh, name f then he will not come within the purview of coparsonary until a died so until the great grandfather died uh, the fifth degree will not come within the four uh, corners of the coparsonary so coparsonary uh, includes only four degrees similarly if a uh, if a male ancestor if a male ancestor inherits a property from the paternal side namely uh, uh, father grandfather and great grandfather that is three degrees uh, above him a male person a male uh, a male ancestor gets a property from the uh, from the three degrees above namely son, uh, father grandfather and grand, great grandfather then that property he will pass on to the three degrees below him namely uh, son grandson and great grandson so uh, the uh, it, it should it should uh, the coparsonary consisting of only four degrees eh? and three degrees above and three degrees below but it will not exceed four degrees if uh, even two uh, two person two coparsoners can constitute a coparson even three suppose the grandfather is no more for grandfather great grandfather is no more grandfather father and son can constitute if grandfather and great grandfather are no more then father and son can constitute uh, coparsonary similarly if uh, if father and son alone is uh, are there they can constitute a coparsonary so in the coparsonary always uh, the uh, all the coparsoners will have right over every part of the property their their property may not be identifiable with the specific boundaries but they have right over the entire coparsonary property similarly in a, in, a, in case of uh, in case of death the the share of the existing coparsoners will increase in case of birth then the share of the existing coparsoners will decrease because a newly a new coparson has come so similarly yes uh, please understand that in the coparsonary is concerned the, pro, the the share in the property will increase in case of death proper share in the property will decrease in case of uh, 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 birth so this is the basic uh, concept we should understand about the coparsonary so coparsonary is still continuing uh, even after the 1956 act and state amendment under section 29a and even after 2005 so we should uh, uh, we should keep this basic principles for the purpose of understanding this coparsonary system in fact i would tell one judgment of the honorable supreme court in 1969 to scc page number 33 1969 to scc page number 33 the concept of coparsonary has been elaborately discussed by the honorable supreme court in the said judgment the salient features of uh, the coparsonary has been uh, uh, 
lay down let me read the uh, guidelines one after another so that uh, uh, the listeners could easily understand in 1969 to scc 39 the salient features of coparsonary has been laid down as under one lineal male descendants of a person up to third generation acquire uh, acquire right by birth in the ancestral property two such descendants at any time can ask for partition three till partition is affected each member of the coparsoner uh, having right over the entire extent of the property four as a result of such co ownership the possession and enjoyment of the properties in common fifth one the no alienation of the property is permissible uh, except for uh, legal necessity with the consent of the other co-partners the last one the interest of uh, the interest of the deceased member lapses on the death of the survivors so these are all the basic uh, 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 features the supreme court has identified uh, apart from that very recently the honorable supreme court in ar 2019 ar 2019 supreme court 3098 AR 2019 Supreme Court 3098. The concept of co-partitionary and whether the act is retrospective or prospective, all these issues have been elaborately discussed. You take note of uh, this uh, citation. We will go to the effect of uh, the uh, 2005 little letter. Similarly, in 2018, 15 SEC, 2018, 15 SEC 662, the concept of co-partitionary has been uh, discussed. So these all these three judgments. Uh, you please keep it in mind to understand the basic concept of uh, co-partitionary then next one uh, ancestral property ancestral property means the property inherited by a male from his father the property inherited uh, by a male from his father grandfather and great grandfather uh, it is otherwise called unobstructed heritage ancestral property is uh, otherwise called unobstructed heritage suppose the property inherited from other uh, other than this ancestral uh, source is uh, is called obstructed heritage and uh, this issue how the uh, how, how we could identify this uh, ancestral property uh, as now we have discussed whether it is obstructed heritage or unobstructed heritage we have to find out the source from which the property uh, reached the hands so this position has also been discussed by the madras high court elaborately in 2012 7 sec 2012 7 sec page number 414 this concept of ancestral property has been discussed in 2012 7 sec 414 so these are all the basic things we have to uh, appreciate uh, before uh, going into the uh, main uh, subject so when uh, when uh, when there was no codified law uh, before 1956 uh, uh, the our uh, uh, leaders then namely um, uh, pandit jawarlal nehru uh, mahatma gandhi madan mohan malaviya dr ambedkar all thought that uh, uh, in, in in order to in order to treat the daughter, daughters yes equal to that of son this the concept of coparsonary should be removed so that was the attempt made in fact uh, they have also and uh, they had a constituted a committee and uh, uh, hindu hindu code bill was virtually uh, framed by uh, b n rao b n rao committee and uh, that uh, committee report was piloted by uh, dr b r ambedkar uh, with a view to Uh, abolish uh, the entire uh, coparsonary because uh, it uh, uh, it discriminates the daughters in fact you know well we have two con- uh, two sets of uh, two major sets of uh, uh, schools one daya paha which is exclusively applicable to uh, uh, eastern states namely west bengal and other uh, uh, neighboring states and the rest of uh, the states uh, are only following uh, daya uh, mitachara law so uh, in daya bhaga in fact daughters have been treated equal to that of son and there is and, and there is no concept of coparsonary in daya bhaga so the same benefit was sought to be extended to the other uh, area areas other uh, states also so 
when the hindu code bill was uh, uh, presented for discussion uh, ultimately the hindu succession act came into force and uh, in the even in the 1956 act uh, the legislature have not completely taken away the concept of coparsonary and the old concept of coparsonary has been virtually retained in the main section 6 of the act 1956 so if you read the preamble of 1956 act it clearly says that there is no new enactment was introduced they say the 1956 act is only to amend and codify the law relating to the succession interstate succession the very very beginning the very preamble of the act is very clear that the very concept of this 1956 is to codify amend and codify the law relating to the interstate succession then uh, it retains uh, uh, the power of testamentary uh, disposition under section 30 so uh, uh, no doubt hindu uh, hindu uh, hindu male uh, can execute a testament under section uh, 30 of the hindu succession act and there is no in fact earlier we have uh, separate uh, Uh, act also for uh, law of wills and uh, after this uh, 1956 enactment a specific provision has been incorporated under uh, way of section 13 which enables a, a, a male hindu to deal with his property way of testamentary disposition so in the event in the, in the event of no testamentary disposition the the succession and the property uh, has to go under two uh, provisions one uh, section 6 Uh, uh, success in respect of a uh, coparsonary property another section 8 gender rules of succession uh, i would say section 6 uh, is an almost an exception to section 8 uh, so section 8 is gender rules of and uh, general rules uh, in which section 6 is an exception then uh, uh, then let us uh, go to the very uh, few important uh, important provisions of the act uh, you know well section 2 is very clear that uh, this act is applicable to hindus uh, buddhist uh, jaina six all uh, uh, all these are these are all the religions which are following this hindu law and it is not applicable to christians muslims uh, even jews parsis the act has no application and the section section 2 is uh, very uh, clear section 4 uh, uh, has an overriding uh, uh, effect if you read section 4 which says that uh, uh, save as otherwise expressly provided in this act a, any text rule interpretation of hindu law or custom or usage of as yes, any part of that law in court immediately before the commencement of this act shall cease to have effect with respect to any matter for which provision is made under this act b any other law in force immediately before the commencement of the act shall cease to apply to hindus in so far as it is inconsistent with the provisions of the uh, uh, act so if any custom or a, any uh, 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 any rule or any text which was already there automatically uh, come to an end the moment act 1956 came into force but if uh, if, if 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 those uh, uh, if, if any any other custom which was prevailing which is not inconsistent with the provisions of this act then uh, that can be followed yeah, a classic judgment of uh, the supreme court uh, regarding uh, the applicability of section 6 uh, in 2007 uh, 5 scc 561 2007 5 561 this is also from uh, 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 punjab state and supreme court has extensively dealt with the effect of uh, section 4 as well as the custom if custom which has been proved and established then that will prevail is the view taken by the supreme court uh, in 19 uh, 2007 5cc uh, 561 then let us go to uh, section 6 uh, section 6 uh, we can categorize section 6 under three classifications one pre amended section 6 uh, then state amendments uh, uh, introduced way of section 29 capital a then three post amendment uh, uh, 2005 uh, prior to amendment that is the original text of uh, section 6 uh, reads as follows devolution of interest in coparsony property so we are only dealing with coparsony property 
if it is a separate or self regulated property then uh, rules of succession uh, comes under section 8 so section 6 exclusively deals with the co personary property when a male hindu dies after the commencement of the act we are i am reading the pre amended provision when a male hindu dies after the commencement of this act having at the time of his death an interest in imtachara co personary his interest his interest in the property shall devolve by survivorship upon surviving members of the co personary and not in accordance with the act so we should keep this particular word namely his interest in the co personary property his interest in the property so not the entire property then how this interest in the property could be uh, could be determined then we have to read the proviso proviso says provided that if the deceased had left him any female relative specified in class 1 or male relative specified in the class who claims through such female relative the interest of the deceased muttachara coparsi property shall devolve by testamentary or interest succession as the case may be under this act explanation 1 makes it very clear that for the purpose of this section the interest of a hindu muttachara coparsner shall be deemed to be the share of the property that would have been allotted to him if a partition of the property had taken place immediately before his death irrespective whether he was entitled to claim partition or not so here by of explanation 1 the legislature had introduced a concept of a notional partition is only fictional partition actually hindu male died when 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 the when the issue has come up the hindu male died but we have to presume as if there was a partition while he was alive take an example father uh, why father mother one son and one daughter suppose if a father if there was no female heir take an example only father and son alone are there neither uh, mother neither, nor daughter are available only father and mother alone are there in such case the moment father died the property will reach the hands of the son because son uh, is the only surviving co-partner there is no other uh, person so once a, once a common ancestor or a co-partner died soon after his death the property will reach the hands of the remaining co-partners in case proviso proviso says in case there are female heirs as specified in class 1 take an example uh the same illustration will take father left behind his uh, uh, wife mother and one son and one daughter so here there are uh, two female legal heirs as per class 1 who are the uh, wife as well as daughter so wife and daughter both are class 1 female heirs as per schedule uh, of the hindu succession act so in this case we have to apply this notional partition theory namely we have we have to assume yes if there was a partition during the before the death of uh, the uh, uh, hindu uh, uh, who died so uh, uh, by legal fiction a notional partition theory has been introduced by of explanation 1 uh, so we have to we have to assume that there was a partition Uh, uh, while the person hindu male uh, was alive if, if there was a partition uh, what will happen then uh, the out of 10 acres uh, uh, five five acres uh, will go to father the another five acre will go to uh, the son and uh, after the death of that uh, father then father's share again uh, has to be divided among all the class one legal heirs namely son daughter yes or less wife so i i will give uh, again i will uh, reiterate uh, hindu male died leaving behind his wife son and daughter if uh, uh, if, if the notional partition theory uh, is applied to the present case then during the lifetime of the father the property would have been divided equally by father and son because both are co-partners then after uh, uh, after that father's of will again divide among all the three namely again son and uh, uh, daughter and mother, and mother uh, wife all the three will get the uh, that off of the father's share so 
so now uh, sun is get sun is already having uh, off share and he is again getting uh, getting one third of his father's off share so now he, uh, the uh, the by as per the proviso uh, uh, to section old section 6 uh, now we get uh, right to the property uh, that is the sun is getting larger extent and the female hairs are also getting share uh, yes only class on hair they 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 were not given they were not given uh, uh, full right or uh, equal right as that of the sun only class, uh, right given by treating them as class on hairs and uh, this position uh, has been discussed in number of uh, cases because sun is getting under two mode of uh, succession whereas uh, daughter and other female legal hairs are getting uh, uh, from only one source so this was the position and uh, so here the old uh, before amendment daughter was not a co-partner only son was there so this position continued from 1956 to uh, 1990 in 1990 uh, a lot of uh, uh, amendments were brought in under various uh, states by inserting section 29 capital a uh, firstly uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, brought a state amendment by elevating the daughter uh, who, who remain unmarried yes on the date when the act came into force to a position of a co-personer. So in order to, uh, that was the state amendment. So in order to claim the claim the benefit of, not to claim the benefit of this uh, uh, state amendment, the daughter should have remained unmarried yes on the date of uh, 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 the state amendment uh, following andhra pradesh in many other states like tamil nadu there was an act uh, one of 1990 which came into effect on 25 3 1989 25 3 1989 so yes on 25 3 1989 the daughter should have remained unmarried and pa both the father and uh, daughters both should uh, should be alive if uh, father died before the then uh, uh, succession opens uh, as per 1956 enactment and claim the, the benefit of it. Similarly, for uh, Karnataka and Orissa, uh, Kerala, uh, all, uh, all, all these states uh, have introduced uh, section 29A way of uh, state uh, um, amendment and thereby the daughter was elevated to the position of co-partner uh, as that of the uh, uh, son. But uh, the, uh, subject to rider, that uh, she is not uh, entitled to claim, uh, sir. Uh, uh, beyond, uh, she is not. She is not. She is entitled to claim, provided she should uh, have remained uh, unmarried. And uh, this uh, position uh, came up uh, before uh, uh, the Madras High Court as to whether it is applicable to the pending uh, proceedings. Applicable to whether it is applicable to pending proceedings. Uh, because uh, suit would have been filed earlier. This act came into force on 25 uh, 3 a, 1989. So, whether the amended act could be applied even to in all these states, the similar problem arose in all these states, whether this amended act could be applied to all the uh, pending proceedings, uh, namely, uh, then the Madras uh, I Court. In uh, 1991, as uh, 1991, one law weekly, 1991, one law weekly, 97. The Madras High Court has taken the view that uh, yes, on the date when the act came into force, if uh, father is alive, then the benefit of the amended act can be extended to the uh, daughters also. Uh, I, why I am dealing with this amended, uh, the state amendment is uh, uh, the 2005 act is only an enlarged version of the state amendment. Therefore, I have, uh, because in many states all over India have introduced this uh, state uh, state enactment way of uh, insertion of section 29A. Therefore, uh, I want to elaborate the implication of six, uh, the state amendment uh, so that we can easily understand the uh, concept of uh, the uh, amended 2005 Act. So, in 1991, one law weekly view that uh, the Act has only prospective application, it has no retrospective application. 
suppose father died before the cut off date fixed under the act then the law which was uh, prevailed then will apply and not the amended act that was the view taken simultaneously at the same time uh, the, uh, again the andhra pradesh judgment uh, a case was filed before uh, uh, andhra pradesh high court in ar 1990 ap 263 in ar 1990 ap 263 narayana reddy versus uh, uh, sai reddy almost similar uh, issue uh, at, at come for consideration that matter went to honorable supreme court the honorable supreme court uh, in, uh, in in sai reddy versus narayana reddy reported in 1991 3 sec 647 1991 3 sec 647 held that Uh, uh in the absence of any final partition in the absence of any final partition between the parties or any final degree then the, the, the benefit of this uh, uh, social welfare legislation should be extended to all the pending litigations so the supreme court has held that irrespective to supreme court has not gone into the issue as to whether father was alive or not but supreme court has gone to the extent of saying that even assume uh, even assuming that uh, litigation is pending that would have been filed before the act the state act came into force uh, but the fact that it is pending before court and no final decision was taken and no final decree was passed then even in those cases this uh, benefit of 29a can be extended that was the view taken by the uh, supreme court in 1991 3 sec 647 why i am stressing this judgment uh, because this judgment has also been followed even to 2005 act the matter is now subject is before the larger bench but still there are two judgments of supreme court reported in 2011 6 sec 2011 6 sec 462 2011 sec 462 um, that is uh, uh, prema case prema then 2011 9 SCC 788, 2011 9 SCC 788, Ganduri Kodi Sarma. In both these cases, the Supreme Court has has applied the law laid on in society in 1991 and held that even respect of this 2005 Act, when this is pending before the court, either before the trial court or before appellate court or before high court, Supreme Court, irrespective of the fact when matter is pending. then for pending matters unless final degree is passed then the benefit of the 2005 act has to be extended this is the view taken by the supreme court in these two uh, decisions following the judgment of supreme court in sai reddy case mr so, manokran uh, yes. i have received two three messages from people that they say slightly go slow because you know the subject very well some people are taking notes they are not been able to cope up with that very sorry sir i will follow that very sorry yeah. no no not sorry yes. but once we are trying that people should learn this subject yes, uh, so sometimes you, it is just like you are an expert of t20 and suddenly somebody sorry. says to play five day match so people would like to uh, people would like I, that they, i, I am seeing large number of large number of participants are making the notes so i Definitely. think even the stenographer will not be able to catch up right sir thank you thank you sir i am also not an expert i am also student top law no, no. anyway i will slow down true sir, no, no, true, sir. question is that they should be able to cope up sir certainly sir mm. so, so, the, uh, the smile of like uh, ramshad and all shows that they have actually acknowledged that yes it should be slow right sir mm. right. then yes for this uh, state enactment uh, um, we have seen even though the act uh, came into force uh, on a particular date the uh, supreme court has not taken note of the date on which the succession opens date on which succession opens namely you know well uh, the not to uh, in order to uh, claim the benefit as a co-partner father should be alive if father died before the state amendment then the act which was prevailing prior to the amendment alone will prevail and uh, the new act has no application that was the consistent that that that, that, that was the view originally taken by the madras high court in 1991 law weekly but because of society the uh, position has been completely changed while so yet another uh, uh, case came up before the division bench of the madras high court headed by the very same judge headed by the very same judge who dealt with 1991 
one law weekly 97 wherein the madras high court has taken the view that the act has only prospective application and it has no retrospective application that was the view taken in 1991 but because of this uh, uh, sairity case again the division bench of madras high court in ar 1994 Uh, in ar 1994 madras 647 the division bench of madras high court uh, uh, in fact that you who dealt with 1991 was a party to the division bench in 1994 but he has no other option except to follow the law laid down in sairedi case therefore the division bench in sanma odayar சண்முக உடையார் கேஸ் ரிப்போர்ட் நைன்டீன் நைன்டி போர் மெட்ராஸ் ஏஆர் which are pending before the court. So, in none of the judgments, uh, including Sairiti, the implication or the effect of the death of the father before the act came into force has not been taken note of therefore the same error was, uh, in 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 notably or uh, some some has been carried out even the subsequent decisions of the honorable supreme court which you have already noted that is 2011 uh, 6 sec 462 then another 2011 9 sec 788 in both these judgments the earlier view of sairedi alone has been followed so this was the uh, position then uh, uh, 2005 what has happened after this uh, 2000 uh, the 1990 amendment act in various states have, uh, have elevated the daughter to a position of a co-partner so between 1990 to 2005 uh, in many of the states in india daughters have given special credit while so the legislature thought it fit to eliminate this distinctive discrimination shown to the daughters so the law commission also had filed its 174th 174th law commission report 174th law commission report in may 2000 and suggested various amendments in the hindu success act one of the major amendment suggested by the law commission was to to remove the general uh, inequality gender inequality among the uh, male and female to removal of section 23 removal of section 23 deals with the right over the house uh, then this uh, was again discussed uh, uh, by the uh, legislature and uh, you know well this uh, success and law uh, comes within the entry 5 entry 5 of list 3 entry 5 of list 3 of the constitution in the schedule 7 concurrent list concurrent list since the success and law comes under a, a concurrent concurrent list the uh, central government thought it fit to introduce a new enactment for the purpose of of uh, uh, the uh, extending the benefit to the daughters in the entire country and accordingly this uh, 2005 act 39 of 2005 uh, came into force on 99205 i am going to deal with two important dates 199205 that is the date on which the, the act 39 of 2005 came into force but actually the bill was uh, introduced uh, placed before the rajya sabha for discussion on 2012 2004 therefore even under the amended act any alienations or partition or disposition or even testamentary disposition which got taken place before 2012 2004 that is the date on which the uh, bill was uh, placed for consideration before the rajya sabha so anything happened prior to 2012 2004 as uh, has been retained and it, it and it will not be disturbed so anything happened or any disposition had taken place any sale had taken place any partition took place 
or any will which had given effect before that date can't be disturbed uh, because of this uh, 2005 enactment is the view taken by the legislature accordingly the new act has come uh, now the issue uh, arises another issue has come after this uh, central act what is the effect of the state act you know well article 254 2 of the constitution article 254 of the 254 Uh, class 2 of the constitution says if uh, if when if, if there was any state enactment subsequently if the central act has come in respect of the very same subject then that central act alone will prevail over the state act so the moment the central act came into force that is 2005 uh, 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 came into force then the automatically the state uh, state enactments in various states namely section 29a uh, which was there in uh, number of states as i said tamil nadu andhra karnataka orissa as well as maharashtra all these state enactments uh, uh, have gone it, it has no effect but i would say one more uh, uh, thing suppose even after this uh, central act if the state uh, state uh, uh, has decided to retain uh, the original position they cannot retain the original act which has in effect nullified by the central act but they can reenact a new law on the very same subject to suit their convenience but they should place it before the president they should get the assent of the honorable president and they should also appraise the position that there were already th- there is a st- central enactment and we don't want to give effect to the state and act the central enactment in our state so they should enact a new law and they should get the con- uh, assent of the honorable president then only they can implement uh, the state enactment so this position has been well discussed by the honorable supreme court three justices bench of the supreme court in 1995 4scc 1995 4scc 718 1995 for scc 718 so accordingly uh, the once this uh, state uh, central enactment has come then automatically the state uh, state act goes and this central act alone will prevail now let us go to the salient features of this uh, uh, six uh, of the act because the heart of the topic today is only the uh, implications of this uh, uh, section 6 three amended or post amended now let us go to the salient features of this uh, uh, section 6 of the amended act 2005 we have already seen before amendment uh, the main section of section 6 uh, retains the coparsonary and survivorship the proviso alone uh, paves a way to the uh, class 1 female heirs uh, to get right as class 1 heirs not as coparsoners so if uh, yeah, old section 6 if, uh, uh, if there was no female heirs as per class 1 then the entire property will go to the hands of the living coparsoners suppose if a deceased coparsoner left behind a female heir in class 1 as per proviso to section 61 of the pre amended act then notional partition theory has to be applied and thereby the property has to be divided so that was the position earlier and after this uh, uh, amendment came into force uh, uh, the uh, the very very object behind this act is only to treat the daughter uh, treat the daughters as coparsoners so as like son now daughters are also entitled to get right by birth so they are they uh, by birth they became a coparsoner under this uh, act uh, 2005 this act i have said came into force on 99 2005 the very beginning word of section 61 says that on and from the date on of the commencement of this act the daughters became a coparsoner by birth so the act very reading of this section clearly says that only from the date on which the act came into force the daughters became a coparsoner and here there is no discrimination as like the marriage and uh, in the state act we have seen the state act uh, Im- imposes an uh, restriction on the married daughters as far as 2005 act is concerned whether daughters born 
before 1956 or born after 1956 make no difference similarly whether daughter is born before 2005 or born after 2005 makes no difference so the date of birth of the daughter has no relevance at all that is the most important aspect similarly uh, the father must be alive yes on the dad yes on the date when the daughter and father both should be alive yes on the date when the act came into force in fact in 2006 to sec page number 36 2006 16 2016 2 sec page number 36 the honorable supreme court Uh, in uh, pragas versus pulavadi case clearly held in paragraph 17 uh, uh, living and uh, a living daughter of a living father supreme court has used the very same word living daughter of a living father therefore daughter and father both must be alive yes on the date when the act came into force on 9 9 similarly whether daughter married or unmarried makes no difference so the only uh, restriction is that the uh, both father father and daughter must be alive on 992005 to the property should be available for partition suppose if it had if already partition had taken place before 2012 2004 then we can't do anything uh, as per uh, the new act also so these are all the basic uh, uh, things similarly now daughters uh, Shall have the same rights. Daughters shall have the same rights as that of the son in the co-partition property, and the daughters also gets that right. Yes, with all insurance of co-partition, it's almost like they are separate property, and they can deal with it even by invoking the testamentary disposition under Section 30. So after this property come to their hand. they can treat it as the top their property with all insurance of co-partitionary and they can also deal with under section uh, 60 sorry 30 of the uh, new act similarly daughter also gets that property with all liabilities in respect of the co-partitionary but there is no payas obligation the uh, act uh, uh, since there are large number of students and we have not explained what is co-partitionary just explain in a minute what What is co-partitionary yes, and what is class one yet? Because yes, uh, students will not understand what is co-partitionary. I will do that, sir. So yes, we have already, you. I have already in the beginning of uh, uh, the discussion, I have explained about co-partitionary. No, but uh, since the participants uh, joined late, also only on that factor. Yes, sir. Co-partitionary. Right, yes, I have already said then. Hindu Jain family is a larger party. Hindu Jain family is a larger party. It includes male and female has. There is no restriction at all. Yeah, take an example my father my mother myself my brother and my wife and my brother's wife all constitute a joint family here both male co-partitioners as well as female members are there so it is a joint family consisting of male and female members even a single male member can constitute a joint family take an example i, I and my wife and daughter and my daughter can constitute a joint family there is no difficulty at all this joint family not only for property joint family may have property or may not have property it makes no difference joint family hindu joint family is concerned it is not necessary that it should have property it is not necessary if, if it has property no difficulty at all if no property then no, there is no need not worry about it similarly hindu joint family not only for property and also for food worship worshiping right and they all living under one roof so these are all the basic concept of co-partitionary co sorry hindu joint family is a larger body uh, within that uh, co uh, hindu joint family uh, uh, the 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 inner cabinet of the uh, hindu joint family is the co-partitionary in the co-partitionary is concerned we have already seen both male and female members would constitute a hindu joint family whereas co-partition is concerned only male members can constitute how take an example i am alive my son is there my father is there so we three only male members that is my father and myself and my son three would constitute a co-partitionary suppose if, uh, if my no, no son to me 
myself and my father who constitute a coparsonary myself my father and grandfather who is alive both all the three could constitute a coparsonary so coparsonary consisting of only male members those male members uh, gets right by birth so the uh, birth right was given to the male members you know well only in 2005 daughters were elevated to the position of a coparsonary till such time only male members were there suppose that coparsonary is concerned we it cannot go beyond 4 degrees take an example a great grandfather b grandfather c father d son so these uh, four uh, degrees that is son father grandfather great grandfather suppose that last uh, coparsonary namely d married and gave birth a son that is e that e will not come within the purview of this four degrees because coparsonary can't exceed four, four degrees only four degrees would be there to constitute a coparsonary even minimum two maximum four minimum two and maximum two uh, four coparsoners can constitute a coparsonary single person can't constitute a coparsonary single person gets the property then you will get it as uh, suppose if uh, uh, my uh, if, uh, if uh, suppose if d alone is available a b c that is great grandfather grandfather father all the three died then uh, d alone is there he will get the property as that of absolute property and there is no coparsonary but the moment the uh, son is born to d then a new coparsonary is constituted that is the basic uh, concept similarly you please see if the coparson is a male ancestor gets a property from the earlier three degrees any one of the earlier three degrees he gets the property then that property he can pass on to three degrees below his line that is uh, d gets the property from a b c that is great grandfather grandfather and father so now d alone is there he can pass on this uh, property to his three generations below namely uh, e f and g so there only there must be three degrees the four degrees not beyond that that is the basic uh, concept of suppose uh, similarly in the coparsonary if a person a uh, one of the coparsoner died a b c d we have seen four one person died on death uh, you see the share of the existing coparsoners increases similarly if uh, if there were only two or three coparsoners another person uh, born then by by this uh, birth the cop the coparsonary enlarges so now the three share uh, has to be divided by four therefore always in coparsonary by death the share will increase and by new birth the share will decrease so this was this is the concept of coparsonary and i have already said one leading decision of the honorable supreme court in 1960 yeah, yeah, 19 ar yeah, 1969 uh, 2 scc ar yeah, 1969 2 scc 33 the one of the leading decision of the honorable supreme court regarding this coparsonary concept and very recently the honorable supreme court in ar 2019 ar 2019 supreme court 3098 there are number of judgments and i have given only leading decisions in fact yet another judgment of rohit sawan rohit sawan 2013 9 scc 2013 9 scc 417 then 2018 15 scc 2018 15 scc 662 these are four judgments you please uh, keep it in your mind if you read these four decisions uh, you can easily uh, understand the entire concept of coparsonary in fact i have elaborated in nutshell about the concept of coparsonary in the hindu uh, joint family and these judgments supreme court has clearly first citation is uh, 1969 2 scc 33 69 2 scc 33 so this was uh, uh, th- th- these are all the basic things uh, we have to uh, take note of while um, uh, 
considering this the concept of co parsonry now let us go to the amended uh, uh, post amended 2000 pain so in the amended act we have seen daughter daughter has been elevated to a position of a co parsoner and the very beginning of section uh, 61 uh, says that daughter of a co parsoner the word used under section 61 indicates that only daughter alone has been elevated to the position of a co parsoner and neither neither the mother or sister has not been elevated so uh, if uh, if different interpretation has to be given then the uh, suppose as i said suppose father uh, died before the act came into force then the legislature in their wisdom definitely would have included the word uh, uh, sister that the daughter uh, sister of a co parsoner they have not said so they have clearly said only daughter of a co parsoner that means uh, to make the daughter as a co parsoner that co parsoner father must be alive that is why the act has uh, words have been coined in such a way uh, by the legislation then we have seen uh, uh, that uh, uh, she gets the right as equal to that of Uh, uh, son in the family, and uh, there is no payas obligation. The uh, any debt incurred uh, by the father, grandfather, great grandfather before the act came into force, uh, uh, then the creditor can proceed only against the son, and the creditor cannot proceed against the daughter. So daughter is not liable for the past uh, debts. So and the payas obligation has been completely removed. This uh, 2019 nine SCC uh, Roy Chauhan is four one four one seven equivalent to AR two thousand thirteen AR two thousand thirteen Supreme Court three five two five three five two five. Then let us uh, go to this again in this uh, new Act uh, section uh, the, uh, six. Uh, the concept of national partition theory has been retained. Take an example. Act came into force on 99-2005. The daughter, the father died subsequent to the act came into force. Then daughter, uh, uh, suppose suppose daughter has chosen to file a suit as on today, the father is no more. So, for daughter has to apply the notional partition theory and has to decide whether uh, on as on 99-2005. when the act came into force whether uh, the, if the notional partition theory is applied then what would be the share allotted to the all the co partners so that uh, concept that that uh, the, the, that has to be applied so notional con- concept fictional partition theory has to be applied for the purpose of ascertaining the share of the daughter so uh, suit would have been filed long after the act came into force but uh, on the date of filing of the suit we have to presume daughter uh, daughter is alive but father may not be alive but daughter has to apply the fictional partition namely what would what would have been the share in the event of any partition which had taken place before the father's death that is after the act came into force on 99 2005 by applying this uh, fictional uh, partition theory we have to uh, ascertain the share and uh, and then equal share should be given to the uh, daughter in fact uh, section 6 uh, uh, one proviso as well as section 65 of the amended act has made it very clear that anything happened before anything happened before the act came into force uh, namely that is 2012 2004 2012 four was the date on which the bill was placed before the rajya sabha so any alienation made by the father or brother or any disposition which are taken place or any partition which are taken place or any testamentary disposition which are taken place cannot be altered after the act came into force on 99 2005 take an example uh, suppose the the, the, the word section 65 the word used is final partition final degree mere passing of preliminary degree Uh, is only series series uh, 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 ascertained but the property by meets and bounds uh, will be divided only after the final degree therefore section 65 uh, 
uh, in, in very clear and categorical terms held them unless final degree is passed then proceedings are deemed to be in, uh, deemed to be pending therefore uh, until the matter is finally uh, the final degree is passed and property is uh, segregated by meets and bounds uh, final by of final degree then we have to we have to presume that the litigation is pending suppose if there was no final degree before 2012 2004 or if there was no final partition between the parties before 2012 2004 then that property is available open for partition uh, yeah, even after the act 2000 2005 so this was the uh, uh, basic and important provisions of uh, this uh, uh, amended act then another issue came up whether this act is a prospective or retrospective effect i would say by reading of the provision itself uh, makes it very clear that uh, the act is only prospective application there are there were confusions uh, uh, regarding this applicability because we have already seen in sairedi irrespective of the debt uh, of the death the supreme court has proceeded to observe when lease is pending then the it is a the welfare legislation therefore the benefit of the amended act Uh, has to be extended to the pending matters and nowhere the supreme court has gone into the date of the death and its implication in the succession therefore uh, uh, 1990 uh, this uh, sairedi case has been con- continuously followed by 1991 3sc 647 has been continuously followed in prema in 2011 6sc 462 you already noted then 2011 9 sec 788 tanduri kodiswarama and the benefit of the amended act has been extended uh, to the uh, pending matters also no pro- there is no difficulty can be extended to the pending litigation provided father should have died after the act came into force on 99 2005 suppose litigation would have been pending litigation would have been filed before the act came into force but uh, it may be pending after the act came into force but in order to extend the benefit the father should have uh, should have should have died after 99 2005 if not then suppose father died before the act came into force then the law which was prevailing at the time of death alone will prevail what is the law prevailing except in the state enactments 29a the rest of the countries rest of the states the 1956 act alone was uh, there Uh, the what is the effect of 1956 we have seen the old section 6 and proviso old section 6 only uh, co-partners will get the property by survivorship but proviso says if a female heir is there then female heir will get the property as class 1 heir along with the other class 1 heirs therefore earlier take an example of a father uh, leaving behind died leaving behind son and daughter the earlier position was uh, father and son uh, would get half share then the father's half share will be divided again equally between son and uh, daughter so son will get 3 by 4th daughter will get 1 by 4 that was the position prior to the act now after the amendment 2005 now uh, for, for daughter is also uh, treated as a co-partner so if a father died leaving behind a son and a daughter now all the three will get equal right that is 1/3 uh, uh, by notional partition now father is no more therefore father sir will again uh, go uh, go to the father and uh, the daughter and the son so now each son will get half share daughter will uh, daughter also gets half share so that is the present uh, uh, position so whether it is retrospective or pro- prospective nowhere the act said whether it is prospective or retrospective but no doubt i know all the listeners would agree with me that uh, this enactment is is a substantial in nature because it is is substantially deal, dealt with dealt with the property of uh, the parties concerned so virtually uh, uh, by making the daughter as a co-partner it affects the right of the son as well as the widow so now the widow 
sir also considerably diminished because making the daughter as a co partner so now the sir is opposed uh, to the daughter also by treating her as a co partner so uh, the property right is substantially affected because of this amendment therefore the act should be treated only as a prospective uh, prospective nature and we have seen uh, in, many, in many places the act itself is very clear term said that on and from the date of commencement of this act so that wording itself is make uh, is very clear that the act has been given only prospective application and uh, uh, the act has not uh, disturbed the past uh, disposition which have taken place before 2012 2004 so if the intention is to give retrospective effect then the legislature would not have fixed the cut off date as 2012 2004 to retain the alienation under testamentary disposition which have taken place before the said uh, uh, date similarly section 6 of general clauses act to please take note of section 6 of general clauses act which says that anything done before a new amendment came into effect then that should not have any implication on the rights which has already been accrued in effect a right which has been divested a right which has been divested before the amended act cannot be redivested because of the amended act so a, a right or anything or any property issue which has been settled before the act came into force cannot be allowed to be unsettled retrospectively it would cause serious uh, prejudice to the parties concerned in fact uh, uh, the uh, uh, bombay uh, high court in ar 2012 bombay uh, 101 the division bench uh, has taken the view that uh, the daughters who born on and after 99 2005 alone are entitled to become a co partner so the division bench has fixed the cut off date namely the, uh, the date on which the act came into force yes the cut off date and held that the daughters who born after 99 uh, became a co partner then uh, that matter was uh, challenged before the judgment was questioned before supreme court supreme court has uh, dismissed the uh, slp in the admission stage but left open the legal issue uh, to be decided in appropriate cases under such circumstances a full bench was constituted uh in uh, the full bench in ar uh, 2014 bombay 151 ar 2014 bombay 151 has extensively dealt with this uh, uh, issue and held that section 6 uh, uh, 61 is only uh, prospective application and uh, exactly uh, the supreme uh, the division bench has uh, the full bench has said as under section 61a that is daughter by birth became a co-person in her own right in the same manner as the son this has been held as prospective application by the full bench the other two 61b and 61c 61b uh, the daughter of a co-person shall have the same rights and co-person property as she would have had uh, if she had been a son so the daughters who born prior to the act came into force also uh, 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 are, are treated as co partners that is why b 61b has been worded in such a, uh, has been uh, has been worded in a such a way to cover the daughters and to treat the daughters who had born prior to the act came into force as yes, that of a son this has been treated as retroactive so this uh, uh, 61 uh, b covers the daughters who had born prior to the act therefore the 61b has been treated as retroactive similarly 61c be subject to the same liabilities in respect of the co-asset co-parenting property as yes, that of a son so this has also been treated as retroactive so the entire gamut of this uh, section 6 post amendment section 6 uh, has been tested by the full bench and said that this only a prospective in nature and it is it has no retrospective nature but retrospective effect has been given to this amended act then it will result in various uh, mischievous litigation take an example if the act is given retrospective effect what would happen the lady who aged is 80 years uh, even uh, can be treated as a co-partner and uh, she will file a suit uh, 
without uh, uh, unmindful of the fact that the property would have been developed or sold, third party interest would have been created. So many complications are there. Therefore, legislature never intended to give retrospective effect. If their intention is to give retrospective effect, they would have specifically said so in the act itself. Therefore, it can't be given retrospective effect is the view taken by the Bombay uh, uh, full bench. In fact, much before uh, this decision was uh, uh, taken, the Madras uh, High Court in uh, 2012, 2012, five law weekly, 2012, five law weekly, 378, 378, party name, P. Vijay Lakshmi, P. Vijay Lakshmi. Then another division bench in Bhagiradi, in Bhagiradi case, 2008, 4 CTC, 2008, 4 CTC, 374, 374. Then yet another judgment in K.M. Tangavel, K.M. Tangavel, versus K.T. Udayakumar, K.M. Tangavel is K.T. Udayakumar, 2014, 2 law weekly, 113, 2014, 2 law weekly, 113. Then in AR 2013, AR 2013, Madras, page 80, AR 2013, Madras, page number 80. In all these cases, the Madras High Court uh, Division Bench and uh, Honorable Chingles have taken the view that the act is only uh, uh, prosperity obligation. This was the position. But in before Supreme Court, uh, we have seen uh, the, in two cases, in Prema and Ganduri Kodi Surama, Supreme Court has taken the view that uh, once a list is pending, then uh, the social welfare legislation has to be extended to the pending litigations also. While so, the Supreme Court in 2006, uh, 2 SEC 36, 2006, 2 SEC 36, uh, Pragas versus Pulavari case, Supreme Court has said that the act has only prospective application and the Supreme Court has clearly said that the view of the judgment of the full bench judgment of the Bombay High Court uh, 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 the, uh, has been virtually reiterated by the Apex Court. The same view was also taken. The judgment of Supreme Court in 2016 to SEC 36 has been followed by the Honorable Supreme Court in the uh, in the subsequent uh, uh, decision reported in 2000 AS 2018 2018 3 SEC Danama case Danama Danama case 2018 3 SEC 343. 2018, 3 SCC, 343. Then, yet another judgment of uh, the Honorable Supreme Court in Mangamal, in Mangamal, 2018, 2018, 15 SCC, 2018, 15 SCC, 662, 2018, 15 SCC, 662. The Supreme Court has taken a different view. Therefore, now the issue has been referred to a larger bench. Now the matter is pending before larger bench. The reference uh, order is reported in 2019, 6 SEC, 162. The reference order report is now uh, is pending, which is reported in 2019, 6 SEC, 162. So we hope that the Supreme Court, based on today, the judgment of Supreme Court in Pragas versus Polavadi uh, is uh, still holds good. Uh, and uh, now the issue has to be resolved once for all by the Honorable Supreme Court uh, uh, in the pending reference. Uh, the, we, we hope and expect that the Supreme Court would uh, consider the matter in the light of the literal and meaningful and even golden by applying the golden, golden rule of interpretation. In fact, uh, uh, regarding this uh, uh, prospective and retrospective effect is concerned, the constitutional bench. Uh, in one judgment reported in 2015, 15 SEC 1, 2015, 15 SEC 1, it's a constitutional bench judgment. It's only, uh, this judgment is only in respect of, of uh, rule of uh, interpretation. Supreme Court has clearly held that any law should be given only prospective application unless the act uh, clearly says that it is a transparency effect. So 
the principle of law known as uh, the law looks forward and not back forward now law looks for looks forward and not not back forward is the view taken by the constitutional bench in 2015 one uh, 2015 one scc page number one it is a judgment of worth reading supreme court has clearly held in fact i want to read a few lines of the full constitutional bench in 2015 one scc page number one i quote law passed today cannot apply to the events of the past if we do something we do it keeping in view of the law of today and in force and not tomorrow's background adjustment of it our belief in the nature of the law is founded on the bedrock that every human being is entitled to arrange his affairs by relying on the existing law and should not find that his plans have been retrospectively upset this principle is known as law looks forward and not uh, back forward so this was the position of law laid down by the constitution bench so the same view i hope the supreme court is going to uh, take it in the reference which is pending before the uh, before the court so always uh, uh, any any new enactment should be given only effect in the future and not to the past events so the events that are settled once for all cannot be unsettled by giving retrospective effect is the view uh, taken even after this uh, 2005 there are few anomalies uh, in the uh, uh, act uh, 6 i will there are a number of anomalies i will tell one one, one example we have seen in the section 6 it clearly says that any alienation or disposition which had taken place before 2012 2004 cannot be questioned by the daughter who, who, who became a co partner but uh, son is concerned he can question so daughter is concerned he cannot she cannot question so this, this itself clearly shows that now the daughter has not been given right to question the partition some there, there would, she would have some grievance in respect of the partition which had taken place in her absence or she would have some grievance in respect of the alienations or documents which came into effect uh, this uh, before the act came into force so yes now son is given right to question it daughter is not given right to challenge it so this view alone was uh, challenged before uh, uh, the wires of this uh, provision was challenged before the kannada high court in ar 2010 in ar 2010 karnataka page number 27 the uh, so, uh, so um, kannada high court has taken the view that uh, there can't be any distinctive discrimination distinctive discrimination among the son and daughter when both have become a co partner so what what are all available to the son is also available to the daughter also because he, because he has been made as a co partner under the act 2005 similarly there are uh, other there is another anomaly suppose uh, what would happen if a daughter co partner uh, uh, died interstate whether it would be treated as her, her property or whether it would be treated as a co partner property there is no clarification according to me similarly if a son uh, son of a predeceased son uh, if a son of a predeceased son is a co partner son of a predeceased son is a co partner even under the act but not son or daughter of a predeceased daughter you take an example even daughter must be alive they say daughter must be alive so if uh, while making the son of a predeceased son son of a predeceased son as a co partner the legislature should have in, should have should have also uh, included the son or daughter of a predeceased daughter as also co partner this they have not uh, done it then yet another uh, anomaly if a son dies the category of heirs are different from the daughter dies so these are the anomalies still uh, there is a gray area which is yet to be uh, uh, examined by the legislature as well as the court in the in the, in the days to come so these are all the basic uh, uh, effect of the amended amended provision in fact then, uh, in between uh, the judgment of honorable supreme court in uttam case uh, 2016 4 scc 68 2016 4 scc 68 uh, uh, has come uh, the, uh, in that case uh, already 
property there was uh, the, uh, the way i am laying this judgment uh, there are uh, there are two views one view is that if a uh, if a father died before the act 1956 came into force uh, then uh, co personary goes and the person the son gets the right son or daughter gets the right only in his uh, individual capacity and not as a co personal but there are another thinking which says that whether father died before the act 56 or after the act 56 son or daughter would still retains the property as a co personal so these are two conflict views have come in fact this view has been referred to discussed by number of decisions you please ah one view of the supreme court in the following three decisions namely 2006 8 sec 581 2006 8 sec 581 2008 3 8 7 sec 87 sec 87 2009 2009 15 sec 184 in these three judgments supreme court held that when succession opens before the 1956 act then son or daughter at the time son was there now daughter also elevated to the position of co partner so therefore son or daughter uh, who got the right 2009 15 sec 184 the daughter who got the right after the act 1956 uh, uh, gets it as uh, only her uh, his or her uh, separate property and not as uh, co personal property this was the view, one view the another view of the supreme court is that in 2007 5 sec 561 2007 5 sec 561 2013 9 sec 2013 9 sec 417 2016 to sec 36 in all these judgments uh, uh, supreme court has held that irrespective of uh, uh, the fact whether father died before or after it makes no difference uh, the the status of co personary will continue even after the act came into force so the view one view was once uh, success and opened prior to the act came into force uh, then the property reached the hands of uh, uh, the son and daughter uh, will not be treated as that of the co personal property or joint from property the other view was uh, that uh, even after the act came into force it will be treated as joint from property in fact there was a reference uh, to this uh, 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 aspect uh, that reference uh, was withdrawn on the ground that uh, the matter has been settled between the party so now the confusion still continues one view there are few judgments which says that Uh, even after 1956 co personal it continues irrespective of the fact whether father died before uh, 1956 another view father died before 1956 there is a matter co personal it goes and the property reach the hands of son and daughter as that of this uh, uh, individual uh, property so these are all the uh, positions in respect of section 6 uh, uh, is concerned prior amendment subsequent amendment yet another view Uh, it's important uh, uh, when suppose uh, we have seen that uh, uh, son suppose there was a partition in the family we have seen notional partition theory similarly if there was a partition in the family take an example a father and son both had uh, entered into a partition so for, uh, property of prop of sir given to father another half sir given to the son so once uh, property comes to the hands of son that the property which reached the hands of the son no doubt it was an ancestral property corporate property but he gets it as, uh, as uh, he, he holds it as a separate property but the moment uh, son uh, gets a son uh, uh, son gets a uh, son or daughter and son or daughter born to him the share which was given to the son in the partition will automatically gets into the category of the uh, co personal property an example i will tell you a father b son 
there was a partition between a and b five acre was given to father a five acre uh, was given to son b son gets it as that of his separate property no doubt it was originally ancestral property or co-partial property he gets it in the partition he married later he gave birth uh, a son or a daughter the moment uh, a son or daughter born to him then the property which was allotted to the father uh, 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 convert, uh, gets converted as uh, co-partial property in which uh, the grandsons uh, that is uh, b's son and daughter have no uh, have, have right as a co-partners but uh, the property which was allotted to the father namely a will not uh, be treated as co-partial property the property which was given to the divided father namely a will be that of his separate property he can dispose it of as like as he likes once he died interested that five acre which was given to the father a will come to the son b as separate property in which that in the five acre which was which, which comes to the hands of b from his father will not be treated as that of the ancestral property because already family had divided partition had taken place so the son the children of uh, uh, b can claim only uh, in the share of the father b the children of b have no right to claim share which was given to the grandfather namely a so in the event of a suit has been filed by or at the instance of the uh, uh, son or daughter of b then they can claim right only from the share which was given to the uh, uh, b they cannot claim the property which was allotted exclusively to the father so here there are two mode of uh, uh, division one b gets five acres uh, in the partition yes that of the ancestral property and he constitute a co-partially along with his son and daughter that is one aspect similarly b gets another mode of property namely separate property namely that is the five acres which was given to the father so there are two mode of division which was given to uh, b so this uh, position uh, uh, clearly Uh, discussed by the full bench of the madras high court in ar 1979 uh, madras page number 1 no doubt it, it, it is a judgment relating to uh, uh, in, uh, income tax but still the law on this subject uh, has been elaborately considered by the honorable supreme court the honorable full bench in ar uh, 1979 madras page number 1 and uh, full bench judgment that full bench judgment still holds good and it has been repeatedly followed by uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the other judgments also in fact uh, the very judgment of full bench 1979 madras page number 1 was the subject matter in challenge before supreme court uh, and the supreme court has uh, dismissed the uh, slp in a reported decision in 1993 supplementary 1 scc 1993 supplementary 1 scc 580 1993 supplementary 1 scc 580 so the full bench judgment was virtually upheld by the honorable supreme court before it was upheld there were two other decisions came before supreme court that is 1986 1986 three scc 567 1986 scc 567 chandrasen in chandrasen supreme court has virtually reiterated the principle of law laid down by the full bench in ar uh, 1979 madras page number 1 similarly the very same judge uh, uh, honorable judge the judge the judge who authored the chandra chandrasen in 1986 3 scc 567 has again reiterated the same principle in 1987 one scc page number 204 in yudhishthir case 1987 one scc page number 204 party name yudhishthir and this principle has again followed by the honorable supreme court in 
7 SEC, 2018, 7 SEC, 646. 2018, 7 SEC, 646. There are two mode of uh, divisions. One by applying section 6, another by applying section 4. So another by applying section 8. So there are two mode of succession has been discussed by the Honorable Supreme Court in the said judgment. In fact, then, uh, the Madras High Court uh, has taken note of all these uh, conflicting uh, uh, views then. and uh, in, a, in a celebrated decision reported in 2017, 2017 3CTC 170, 2017 3CTC 170, the, the Honorable Single Judge of Madras High Court has thoroughly examined the entire position of law on the uh, subject and issue and uh, held that the view of the full bench of Madras High Court in year 1979, page number one, uh, will prevail. And uh, in fact, uh, the law on this subject, including the decision which I have referred to, except this 2018, the rest of the judgments of the Supreme Court have, been, uh, have also been taken note of. And uh, uh, the, the position of law has been reiterated in the said uh, uh, judgment. Now, let us uh, go to the next uh, uh, provision, namely uh, section 8. So, section 6 is concerned. Uh, we have dealt with pre amended, post amended, as well as the state amendment. Now, section 8. Section 8 is concerned. Absolutely, there is no uh, difficulty to understand because it deals with uh, general rules of success in case of males. As I have already said, this section eight is an uh, this section six is an exception to section eight. Uh, in the section eight, the property of a Hindu male dying in state shall devolve upon according to the provisions of this chapter. Mr. Manogaran, how much time do we expect on this particular talk on section eight? I, I hope another twenty minutes. I will uh, cover the entire uh, okay. rest of the provision. It's fine, it's fine, then it's fine. So, section 8, uh, there are a number of categories. Uh, it says 8A, firstly upon the hairs being relatives in class 1. So, uh, in the event of male Hindu dying interstate uh, without leaving any testamentary disposition, then rules of succession, that is, this is relating to separate property or self packed property. We have already covered uh, the co parsing property in section 6. So, this is uh, relating to the separate or self property. property. Yeah, a male Hindu dying interstate without uh, making any uh, will or testimony dis disposition. Then, the uh, the hairs available in class 1, that is, uh, uh, class 1 of the schedule will get the property uh, equally. If there are no class 1 hairs, then the property will, uh, if, uh, secondly, if there is no hair in the class 1, then the property will go to the class 2. Class 2, there are a number of uh, categories. First category, father, then uh, brothers, and there are a number of categories. Then, uh, number, say eight, eight, eight C, if there is no hair of any of the two classes, then to the organates. Lastly, to the cognates. Organates and cognates have been defined under section 3A. Organate is under section 3A. Cognate defined under, under section uh, 3C. Organate is a close blood relative, comes under uh, this uh, 3A. Uh, co cognate means not only uh, blood relatives and even the strangers uh, who gets right over the property will come under the uh, cognate. So, this is the position. Regarding this 8 is concerned, one leading decision of the Honorable Supreme Court is in 2008, 3 SCC 87. 2008, 3 SCC page number 87. Supreme Court has dealt with uh, uh, the scope of section 8. Then section 9 and 10, uh, section 9 deals with the order of succession. How the succession uh, in the male Hindu uh, gives effect. Section 9 says, among the hairs qualified, specified in the schedule, those in class 1 shall take simultaneously unto the exclusion of other hairs. So, uh, hairs in class 1 will get the property equally uh, uh, in the event of a male Hindu ties interstate. Then 10 deals with the distribution of property in class 1. 
the property of an interstate shall be divided among the class one has according to the following rules there are rules specified under similarly if there are no class one uh, has then the property should be divided among the class two has which, uh, which, which is set out under section 12 11 of the act so 9 10 and 11 all deals with them uh, the uh, how the class one and class two hairs of a male Hindu dying interstate uh, should divide the property among them themselves. Then uh, section twelve deals with the cognates and uh, organates. Then fourteen section fourteen is a very important uh, provision next to section uh, uh, six. Uh, fourteen we have already seen the Women's Right to Property Act nineteen thirty seven. The widow was given right in recognition of her pre-existing right, that is maintenance right. So that right which was given prior to the act came into force automatically blossom into the absolute uh, right. So the limited right which was given to a woman's uh, right to property act was given only limited estate. So that limited estate has blossomed into absolute estate and thereby he gets it as the top he, he gets it as that of her absolute property because of section 14.1 and 14.2 is an exception is an, is an exception to 14.1 suppose the property which has been given after the act came into force with the restrictive right under any document settlement or will or any court degree with the, with the restrictive restrictive estate the section 14.1 deals with the limited estate Section 14.2 deals with the restricted estate. So 14.2 is an exception to section 14.1. And uh, the, uh, there were a number of confusions. The Honorable Supreme Court in Tulsama case, 19, 1977, 3SCC, page number 1999, 3SCC, page number 19, is a leading judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. We should read the judgment at least first of 10 or 10 paragraphs. The Supreme Court has elaborated dealt with uh, how we have worshipped the woman folk in the uh, uh, in the earlier point of time, and even many areas in our in, in our country still that uh, woman folk are even being worshipped as uh, goddess. Therefore, the Supreme Court has uh, discussed the law on this subject uh, and held that the uh, uh, only uh, uh, given interpretation to section 14.1 and 14.2 and this judgment. Uh, still holds good even though there are number of judgments have come and slight deviations have been made but uh, according to me this uh, whenever section 14 1 and 14 2 comes up for consideration you can kindly make use of this 1977 3 scc page number 99 equivalent to ar 9, uh, 1977 supreme court 1944 ar 1977 supreme court one nine double four. Then let us go to section uh, uh, fifteen and uh, uh, sixteen. Uh, section eight, fifteen is like that of uh, section eight, which applies, which is which is applicable to a male Hindu dying interstate. Here, section fifteen deals with the general rules of succession in case of female Hindus. Eight deals with the male male Hindus. This is relating to female Hindus. Uh, in 15.1, a list of uh, uh, legal errors are set out uh, in section 15.1. Take an example, 15.1a. Firstly, if, a, if the property of a female Hindu dying interstate shall devolve according to the rules set out in section 16. 16a says, firstly, upon the sons and daughters, including children of widow's son and, uh, and, and the husband. So similarly, the other categories are there. 15.2 is an exception to uh, 15.1. Take an example. 15.1a says uh, if the if a female Hindu gets some property from her parents uh, after her death uh, in the absence of any children, it should go back only to uh, her parents. That is the source from which she got it. It should go back to that uh, uh, position. That is uh, almost like doctrine of reverse nerve. So female. Uh, got some property from her parents and she died interstate leaving behind no children then the property will again go back to the source from where she uh, got it 
15 to 2 a b says suppose the property female hindu got some property from her husband or father in law then the property which uh, uh, which she got from her father in law and husband if she died intestate that property will again go back to uh, the place where she got it so this is the position set out under section uh, 15 Yeah, an important decision of uh, section uh, on section 15 is 1999 uh, 4 SEC 1999 4 SEC page 86 and uh, section 16 deals with the order of succession and the manner of distribution among heirs of a female Hindu. So this is all the uh, rules distribution of interstate property of a female Hindu is set out section uh, 16 and uh, section uh, 20. deals with the right of a child in a home so even when child uh, a new a child is get to born is also entitled to get a right under section 20 then um, uh, section 22 preferential right section 22 is concerned a earlier con con continuous view of all the courts in india was that it has no application to the agricultural lands so that was the view prevailing from 1956 till 2019 so section 22 preferential right has no application to the agricultural lands that view is no longer good law because now the supreme court has uh, on ans uh, on reference there was a reference to that in ar 9, 2019 supreme court 1506 ar 2019 supreme court 1506 the supreme court has uh, referred the matter to the larger bench now the larger bench has answered it in 2019 2019 14 SEC 162 2019 14 162 so now the uh, section 22 is also applicable to the agricultural lands also then section 25 murderers are disqualified section 23 and 24 now removed that is uh, uh, 23 deals with uh, dealt with the uh, dwelling house now because of this 2000 act it was repealed 24 widows uh, remarrying uh, remarriage now that provision has also been uh, deleted section 25 deals with murderers are disqualified 26 converts descendants disqualified suppose if uh, if a person uh, as ceased to be a hindu he will get the property but not the legal heirs born to him so that is section 26 then uh, section uh, 30 testamentary uh, testamentary succession Uh, that we have already dealt with uh, 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 a yeah, male hindu is entitled to uh, any hindu male or female is entitled to deal with uh, his or her property by of testamentary disposition which is permissible in law so these are all the major sections in which we have almost uh, uh, covered take an example suppose a, a person has uh, projected as if the property is a co-possessive property or ancestral property burden lies on whom that is a very important aspect we have to take note of i will finish it within 2 minutes eh? uh, the law has been well settled by the honorable supreme court in ar 1954 ar 1954 supreme court 379 ar 1954 supreme court 379 and the latest one 2011 5 sec 532 2011 5 sec 532 there are number of judgments in between let me not trouble you by citing all those uh, decisions and uh, on 1954 uh, is a very classic judgment by justice vivian bol as laws were laid down the once a, once a person has come with a plea that it is an ancestral property or co-possessive property and he has prima facie established the very moment he has established his case prima facie there is the matter then burden always shifts upon the other side to say, say say that it is uh, to show that it is an ancestral or it is not an ancestral property or it is a separate or self recorded property so this is the position of law yet another aspect a hindu is not supposed to deal with his uh, co-possession property by way of a gift he can execute he can execute a sale deed he can execute a lease deed he can mortgage the property but he cannot execute a settlement deed Uh, you cannot gift you can execute you cannot execute a gift settlement deed so gift is totally prohibited in respect of undivided sarees concern so no hindu is entitled to 
execute no hindu male is entitled to execute a gift deed in respect of a coparsony property without the consent of the other coparsoners this position of law uh, settled by the honorable supreme court in 1987 3 sec 294 1987 3 sec 294 equivalent to ar 1987 supreme court ar 1987 supreme court 1775 supreme court has made it very clear case and held that gift in respect of an undivided coparsony property is void it need not be even challenged it is a void by, by its nature itself but one exception supreme court has carved out an one exception only in uh, 2004 1 sec 295 2004 1 sec 295 a coparsoner is entitled to execute a gift in respect of a reasonable portion in favor of a daughter for uh, towards sitna or at the time of her marriage so even a father has no right to deal with the entire property a father has no right to execute a settlement in favor of wife or mother whereas father can execute a settlement deed in respect of a limited and reasonable portion in favor in favor of a daughter Uh, yes, held in 2004, 1 SCC, page number 295. What is reasonable uh, extent has to be decided in the facts of that particular case in the view taken by the Honorable Supreme Court. Yet another issue, the whether illegitimate son are entitled to get right uh, equal to that of the legitimate son. Now, the uh, view consistently taken by all the courts, including Supreme Court, is that illegitimate sons are entitled to get share only from the share of The, uh, that is separate property of the self-regulated property of the father, and the illegitimate son are not entitled to get share in the ancestral property and co-parenting property. This view now doubted by the Constitutional Supreme Court. Now that is also pending way of reference report as reported in 2011, 11 SCC page number one. So now whether illegitimate son is entitled to get share or not is an issue now which is pending in reference in 2011. 11 SCC page number one. Finally, suppose the property has been dealt with by the um, uh, father, uh, for and behalf of minor. If a minor has been shown as yo nomini, yo nomini, that is a party to the document. In the event of any challenge to be made, then son has to challenge it, uh, challenge the sale as uh, null and void uh, by. Uh, by asking for a specific prior in the suit for partition if a father has dealt with without showing the son as a party then son has no necessity to challenge the sale deed mere general suit for partition is enough so if a minor was shown as yo nomini party then it is necessary to challenge it if a son has not been shown the father has dealt with as that of his own property then there is no obligation on his part to challenge the same so these are all the basic things i hope i, I have tried my level best to uh, uh, to to deal with the entire subject in fact uh, when uh, 1933 a jurist uh, had sent a letter to our father of nation mahatma gandhi he asked him to give a solution uh, as to how this family quarrels and uh, property disputes uh, can be resolved uh, in a uh, in a in a harimsa way then gandhi mahatma gandhi sent a letter in reply in one word unless the brothers have changed their attitude then this problem will go forever this was the answer given by uh, our uh, our father of nation in 1933 now we are in 2020 still the attitude of the brothers have not changed that is why the, the legislature have enacted one after another and problem continues forever with this i conclude thank you thank you very much uh, sir the session was quite engaging as we as you were at the outset stated that we will primarily rush uh, go to the nitty gritties of section 6 the effect of pre amendment and post amendment that has been well taken the, but the way the people were glued with the entire session it shows that we would have to have another session beyond section 6 where section 6 uh we can have a bird eye view because mainly people have heard it and then rest of the sections we can have another session so that the people are actually enlightened they will understand the 
uh, nitty gritties of the both. Like yes. one word, though I have understood, but you had used the word of retroactive. As a student of law, I, I know that invariably people know what is the meaning of retrospective. Would you just elaborate what is retroactive? Because I feel that large number of people will not be knowing what is retroactive. Yes, I, I will uh, suppose if, if, if an act has come into force, take an example of the Sandhu Success Act. The act itself is very clear terms said that on or after the act came into force, that is from the date on which the act came into force, then it should be treated as prospective in effect. Take an example. Suppose the act has uh, covered the past uh, transactions also as uh, held by the Supreme Court in Sairiti case. Even the new act which came into force subsequently uh, has been applied to the suits uh, which, were, which, were, which were pending already. So irrespective of whether success and opened before that or after that, uh, the benefit of this act has been given retrospective effect to the pending uh, proceedings. That is retrospective effect. Retroactive means uh, uh, in a clear uh, example is there in section 6, uh, 1 B and C. 6 1, uh, 6, 1 A, we have already seen. Uh, 6 1 A says that the daughter of a co partner we are, we are, I am again referring section 6 1 A of the amended act. The daughter of a co partner cell A, by birth, become a co partner in her own right in the same manner as that of a son. So, uh, her right and her birth right uh, has been crystallized uh, only from the date on which the act came into force as per section 61a that is why it is prospective in nature Retro, uh, retroactive what is called retroactive 6 and 6 uh, 1b and c let us read section 61b the daughter of a co partner shall have the same rights of the proper co partner property as she would have had if she had been a son so it covers the daughters who were born before the act came into force. No doubt the act has come into effect only in 2005. But uh, the very wording of a section says that she would have had as if she had been a son. So we have to treat this daughter as that of the son, even though she might have born prior to the act came into force. Therefore, this is called retro uh, uh, acting. And this position has been well elaborated by the full bench in AR 2014, Bombay 101. The very same inter the interpretation which I have given is not my interpretation. It is the interpretation given by the honorable uh, the full bench of the Madra, Bombay High Court in AR 2014, Bombay page number 1. The same view was again reiterated by the Supreme Court in 2016 to SEC page number 36. That is the position, sir. So thank you. Uh, as what I said that I have always been saying on the platform, uh, whenever the participants continue to remain glued, it shows that people are actually enjoying it. So we had the participants, we had a large number of participants actually who are joining, even though courts, universities, etc. have opened, it shows that people had quite keen interest. Therefore, we had uh, thought that we should have a second session on this aspect. It's a well-received session. Now, two, three questions only we will be taking since we are already gone beyond what was the scheduled time. Yes. Uh, Bimla Bhai, can a Hindu widower execute the will to who is taking care of him, but the property is transferred to him through a special power attorney, which is not registered? Sir, as far as uh, uh, any Hindu male is concerned, there is no hurdle for him to execute a will in respect of his separate and self occurred property, there is no hurdle. He can, he can execute in favor of any person. There is no difficulty at all. He can even execute in favor of a stranger. You know well, the very purpose of will itself is only to deviate from the normal rule of inheritance. That is why he can, he can execute in favor of any person. That is one aspect. Second, suppose if, the, if he wants to deal with co passing property, the will in respect of his share alone uh, is valid not in respect of the entire property. That is the basic thing. Uh, Mr. Ajay asks, Ajay Dev, the amendment affected in section six of the Hindu Succession Act, is it in consonance and give, uh, for the purpose of giving effect to articles 14 and 15 of the Constitution Certainly, of India? Certainly, sir. If you read the very uh, purpose and object of this uh, preamble of this amended act, 
yeah, yes uh, the uh, listener asked the legislature have taken note of section 14 and 15 and held that in order to eliminate this uh, gender discrimination this amendment has been brought in therefore it is only in line with the article 14 and 15 sir mr kp jain uh, an unmarried girl adopts a child after after that she gets married had the child and her mother uh, and her husband died in the state how the property will devolve sir, sir could you could, could you read again sir uh, uh, an unmarried girl adopts a child this is the first part that unmarried girl adopts the child after that she gets married and has a child but her husband dies in the state how the property will be devolved no this has various legal ramifications first i have my own doubt as to how an unmarried daughter could uh, uh, adopt and if uh, this ad this adoption should have endorsed by this husband who married later so unless this adoption is accepted by the husband who got the married later then question of the extending the benefit of the property which is which is available at the hands of uh, the deceased husband uh, cannot be extended to the uh, the adopted son so it it has various ramifications we have to look into the entire background and legal provisions for giving any concrete answer sir uh, a hindu male files partition suit in 1998 in delhi against b he has two children one son one daughter a dies in 2010 and suit is decided in 2020 will the daughter get share in property sir one minute when the suit was filed sir 1998 but he dies in 2010 whether property is ancestral or separate property sir that sir, sahil sahil posed that question sir whether it is suppose suppose the father died after the act came into force probably suit would have been filed before that but act uh, when the act when the act came into force if the son and uh, son and daughter both are alive then daughter is also entitled to get equally as that of the son suppose father died before the act came into force then the daughter will be treated as class 1 heir uh, if it is a ancestral property if it is a separate property there is no difficulty at all all the legal heirs are entitled to get equally sir there is no difficulty because the, in the question it is not clear as to whether it is a ancestral property or it is a separate property if it is ancestral property the father is alive uh, as on 2005 then all are uh, she is also entitled to get as co partner if it is uh, if, if 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 he died before the act came into force then she will be treated only as a class one heirs uh, uh, this question time and again people have asked yeah. could you explain gurupad versus hirabai case of 1978 in relation to notional partition theory gurupad case in 1978 3 scc 383 Uh, authored by honorable justice senior chandra chot uh, has created a lot of confusion that uh, has also been clarified by the supreme court in the subsequent narayan rao case reported in 1985 2 scc page number 321 1985 2 scc page number 321 in the said judgment while applying the notional partition theory the uh, Uh, the uh, the honorable supreme court in gurubath case said that the moment a suit is filed uh, by applying the notional partition theory severance of the status has come into effect that was the view taken in the gurubath case that view has been held as applicable only to the facts of that particular case that has been well clarified by the three judges bench of the supreme court in 1985 2 scc 321 in fact the very same judgment has again come up for consideration in the very recent decision of the uh, uh, supreme court ar 2019 supreme court 3098 ar 2019 2019 supreme court 3098 in these two decisions the supreme court has held that the gurubath case is uh, uh, no doubt uh, uh, it has not been expressly overruled but supreme court has held that gurubath case is applicable only to the facts of that particular case and it cannot be traced or law died down so you please read 1985 uh, 2 scc page number 321 it it exactly dealt with the gurubath uh, 
this is on the facebook karthik karthik asks after legal adoption whether father has a right to write a will to some other person yes sir no difficulty at all if it is for separate property he can deal with it the very purpose of will itself again i reiterating is only for the purpose of deviating from the normal rule of inheritance therefore no difficulty at all in respect of separate or self created property if it is in respect of angel property then he can execute a will only in respect of his share in the uh, co personary uh, thank you sir the questions will continue to pour but ultimately we have to maintain the essence that uh, it has been a wonderful session the words cannot express the manner in which the doubts if any in the mind of a person who has already dealt on this field dwelled on these issues his certain issues would be clarified and one who has done it uh, attending for the first time or some he just had some issues regarding which but after this session he, his doubts would be cleared and he can also have a better insights because they say once you understand the issue then even the judgment is more understandable uh, i on behalf of beyond law clc and ulas punjab university chandigarh thank you for a engaging session though it was for around 2 hours because we started at 11:30 and now it's 1:35 but once you were making the points in a seamless manner it was never realized that we are, it was a 2 hours it was very engaging which gave deep insights to the this thing tomorrow at 5 o'clock we have a webinar on animal protection law in india and the keynote speaker is justice ak sank j shankar uh, sankran nambiar a sitting judge of the kerala high court so tomorrow do stay connected for meeting ids and password for tomorrow session you can follow our page on the facebook that is beyond law clc or the instagram or you can also join the beyond law clc whatsapp group for the latest updates for the videos of the previous session including this session we will all the previous sessions are already uploaded on the website uh, on the website as well as the youtube channel you can watch that subscribe that and like that so you will have the latest and this session would also be uploaded on the youtube channel stay connected stay safe uh we are all thankful to mr n manokaran thank you thank you and the all the participants we are also thankful to you that you heard it patiently your zeal to have the knowledge gives us a trigger that we should do the webinars so that as we say that sharing is caring thank you everyone stay blessed stay home Thank and all those who want to get their numbers connected they will have to connect on the whatsapp number and not on the zoom chat thank you thank you everyone right can i use the button